Catholic preaching about morality in the 1950s had many flaws, but worse followed and had a devastating impact on both church and society. In 1960, most Catholic children still knew that good and evil were a matter of fact, not opinion, and we could tell one from the other whether the issue was lying, stealing, fornication, backbiting, abortion, or missing Sunday Mass. Preachers promoted the virtues, reminded people of God's commandments, and urged them to keep the two great commandments. They were to repent and confess when they sinned, and to reflect regularly on the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. However, for decades now, moral theology has been in crisis and preaching on moral issues with it. Both have largely conformed to the increasing de-Christianization of Western culture. Many church leaders and theologians made a pseudo-peace with secularism, a substitute religion advocated by politicians, media, and so on. Growth in virtue gave way to the latest spirituality fad or self-fulfillment cult. Moral truth became a matter of personal opinion or diversity, and any condemnation of sinful behaviour was labelled judgmental, intolerant, or hurtful. In a remarkable development, the call to repent and to seek forgiveness virtually disappeared from Catholic homilies despite the central role repentance held in Christ's preaching. Pushing God aside, many people turned away from reason, or rather, from the love of truth, and preaching followed the new fashion. Like unbelievers, many Catholics began to hold two sets of moral principles, one set a version of objective morality or God's law, and a second set based on the right to choose, or what's true for me. They learned to switch between these moralities, to choose the set that suited their desires at any given moment. This moral confusion is a key issue for preachers to address today. We have to help people realise that we can know what is good or evil if we want to and that goodness, assisted by God's grace, is the only path to true freedom and holiness, and also to eternal happiness.